as uh, told in Surviving Mold, I felt that starting a syndrome was more than sufficient to get my feet in the door. Um, that anybody would want to hear what kind of evidence we had. And we have just passed 30 years without a single chronic fatigue syndrome researcher responding, not even to uh, having read Mold Warriors and the story of Mold at Ground Zero and chronic fatigue syndrome. So the uh, medical system kind of failed us here. I was able to take advantage of this knowledge by avoiding mold pretty much from the start of the syndrome. At uh, Truckee High School, a curious observation is they say that nine out of the 10 teachers that used that teacher's lounge became ill. Now, why would they say nine out of 10 as if there weren't other people that were in and out of that room? What prompted them to make an exception for this one sole person who didn't get sick? Well, they told you what it is. He felt that there was something in the room that was bothering him so much that uh, he went out and sat in his car, he sat in his camper, and at times he would out drive out to Donner Lake to get away from the school area in general because it just kind of felt bad around, around the whole place. So, if chronic fatigue syndrome was a purely viral illness, then how do you account for the way it spread so swiftly and so completely through such a small group of teachers and yet managed to spare this one teacher? Well, we could see during the progression of this uh, outbreak that if you had this flu, if you got over it within about four weeks or so, actually within two weeks, you were completely out of the woods, you were fine. If you had it for about four weeks or so, you were in trouble. If it went on for six weeks or longer, then that was it. You were going to be one of Dr. Peterson's patients. There seemed to be some kind of immunological reprogramming that took place around the fourth week where it switched from a, um, a purely toxic response mixed with a, a viral illness into some kind of autoimmune type activation. And that activation was perpetuated as long as you were in the slightest trace of these toxins, which um, still need some study. There's um, another uh, inclined village survivor, and I, we both stumbled over this at the same time that as long as we stayed in town, downwind of that algal bloom, we couldn't really make much uh, headway. I'll tell you how I uh, found this guy. I was going out to the desert just because I felt so much better out there. If I could just get out there every weekend, I could uh, recover to a, um, and build up some tolerance for going back into town. And I was out at a uh, runway, at a dirt strip, and I saw this madman out in the hot desert sun, working up a sweat, raking the 700-foot runway with a hand rake. And I thought, this guy must be mad. Um, I was so curious, I walked out to him and I asked, you know, well, there's a, there's a tractor over there with a rake. There's a, uh, I'm sure they'll let you use it. It's kind of ridiculous that you should be doing this. And I could see the wheels turning in his mind as he pondered okay, do I come up with some kind of lame excuse or do I just go ahead and spit it out? Well, fortunately, he was an honest guy and he said, well, you see, I have, I have this chronic fatigue syndrome and I come out here and I do this because it's the only thing that helps. My first thought was I was flabbergasted. If he had chronic fatigue syndrome, how could, how could he possibly be standing up or walking? We were, we were crawling, as you saw in the video. We were, we were paralyzed, we were sick. It was everything we could do to take care of our daily needs. And of course, he was doing the same thing I was. So thinking that uh, chronic fatigue syndrome was with, uh, researchers would be eager to hear about this, I started approaching them. And as we saw with Mary Ackley's presentation on paradigm shift, the resistance is absolutely phenomenal. Um, every excuse, every obfuscation, every act of prevarication that uh, people can indulge in 
to try to avoid looking at the documented evidence that we can present directly out of this inception of the syndrome was brought to bear. And unfortunately for everybody else, the information about the action of these biotoxins and what mold avoidance was doing for some of us was suppressed. And I suppose I should have let it go, but somehow I thought that, that just wasn't right. You know, there's just too many sick people out there and um, people looking for answers. I started taking people on what I call the chronic fatigue syndrome history mold tour. <laughs> I would, any patient willing enough or crazy enough to go with me, I'd take them to the exact spots, the places where the clusters of mystery illness occurred, and some of them are still pretty bad. And as we get close, I try to approach from upwind, and I'm, I try to be careful. Sometimes I make a mistake, you know, people have gotten pretty, pretty badly hit. But when I see the veins starting to stand out, and I see them turn pale and start to stagger around a little bit, I go, that's far enough. Now you know, this, this is it, this is the spot. These people have joined my little band of, um, of uh, moldies and helped spread the word. And I was hoping there was going to be a graphic for it here, but um, the uh, website that we've got is Chronic Fatigue Syndrome Untied, CFS Untied, Unraveling the Mystery of Chronic Fatigue Syndrome, where we explain how I came up with the nanoparticle theory and um, a bit more of what I've done with the Chronic Fatigue Syndrome Mold Tour. And this is uh, 2009, the IACFSME conference in Reno where Dr. Shoemaker did a brilliant presentation on the biomarkers for the um, chronic inflammatory response syndrome. And all the major researchers saw it and congratulated and they were very nice and then proceeded to ignore it for the next six years. But we've got the evidence. We can prove our case. We've got a copy of Mold Warriors that's been carried up to the top of Mount Whitney by a prototype for chronic fatigue syndrome. And uh, I believe that we're eventually getting close. We should be able to get some attention from him in the near future. Not uh, too long ago, uh, 